Hello there Libras, welcome to your tarot reading and uh, either way, I hope this uh, video finds you well. I hope that this reading is still timely and relevant and resonates with you and I hope that you can, you know, get whatever you need in terms of guidance and that um, I hope this video finds you in a good space, okay? Um, I feel like everything that is uh, pulled, uh, all the cards that are shown up here in the spread, uh, really denotes to me um, a relationship reading, okay? And for those of you who have been watching me for the past, you know, couple of years, I don't do exclusive uh, love relationship readings, but I do feel that this is coming out as such, okay? And I also feel like there might be a lot of different people that you're dealing with as well, like a lot of either a lot of options or some of you are dealing with this person, others are dealing with this person, others this person and, and so on and so forth. So the reading seems to be like this, okay? The center is you and then you have like these four other people that you're dealing with. That's what it feels like to me. So um, I'm going to relay some messages or images that came through when I was shuffling and then we'll unpack these messages and see how it plays out in the cards, okay? So you've got some, um, I want to say vivid, um, very vivid images that came through. Um, first of all, first image that I saw is uh, I see this man he's probably like around 45 to 50 years old um, he's uh, he's uh, he, he's wearing like a, a flannel shirt okay and he's wearing um, a, a coat a, a very practical earth tone coat and um, denim jeans and, and a pair of work boots He's, a, he's in his driveway and he's um, shoveling snow. So he, he's shoveling snow and it's, you know, it, it's not fun work. It's uh, heavy duty labor, but there's a lot of snow piled up in front of his truck and he's trying to take his truck somewhere. So he's shoveling snow, shoveling snow, and it seems like he's been at it for like 20 minutes. His face is a little bit red from the cold. His nose is like, you know, starting to, to run and it's also like turning red from breathing in the cold air. He finally succeeds and then he stands up and he kind of leans his weight on his shovel. And um, he's feeling a little bit of pain shooting down his legs, okay? And I feel like this might be the right side, like the, the right leg you know, around the hip area. So I'm thinking something similar to like sciatica or just uh, something um, like a, I don't feel like it's a pulled muscle. I feel like it's a pre-existing um, spot, okay? So then he finally, he puts away the shovel. He's finally able to clear the driveway so that he can move his truck. He gets into his truck and then he drives to this little diner. So through this, um, I guess like moving picture, I feel like he's just going through the motions, okay, going through the motions. Um, the, there's, it, it's cold, it's snowing, and he's just, you know, trying to get someplace warm. He goes to this diner where he goes every day to have his breakfast, and so he sits down at the, let me see, is it the, I guess it's kind of like the counter. This is not a bar, so it's kind of like the counter. And uh, he gets his coffee, he gets his, you know, eggs and whatever, eggs and bacon and, and whatever, you know, like a hard, sturdy man like him would get for breakfast and straight black coffee. And um, there's a woman behind the counter. So it seems as if he goes to this diner a lot because the woman's there, you know, inadvertently, because she makes good coffee, because she's also quite attractive. And I also feel like she's significantly younger than him, okay? Signi by significantly younger, I would say um, 10 years or more younger than this man, okay? She, she's pretty and she's young and she's really just bubbly and she's like everything that you could hope for, you know, when you have a, a gray day and she's serving you food, okay? So she's behind the counter. And she's just like, I saw you kind of limping when you walked up in here. What's going on? And then he touches the side of his hips, like on the right side. He's all like, oh, it's a pre-existing condition. Okay, so that's what he says. 
and then I kind of hear his thoughts where he's thinking like uh, the cold triggers it or it's every time around this uh, every year around this time it bothers me so he's thinking that he did, doesn't tell her but he's thinking that uh, she serves him his food and he's looking at her kind of like doing her thing behind the counter and uh, I feel like he's thinking as well to himself that you know if I were younger I would love to have a woman like that by my side okay he, he's not thinking anything inappropriate he's just thinking that she's a very lovely lady she's pretty she's nice she's kind and she seems very observant so he's thinking that but he doesn't let his feelings show show so this is a man who who's got a very very rough exterior he's um he's probably like a blue collar you know day laborer not that there's anything wrong with that i just feel like you know he's 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 somebody that fixes things he's somebody that uses his hands and um uses a lot of force with his job right so you don't see the tenderness or the softness in him but his thoughts are very soft and tender um, you don't see it on the exterior of this man, but I feel like, you know, he, he's got a, a good heart, okay? He's an honest, hard-working, good man. And the scene cuts out. So, what I, I was seeing here is, um, I feel like for some of you, you might be the waitress or the, the hostess or the person working behind the counter okay you might be in a position where a lot of people that you normally might not consider your type um, are kind of um, secretly admiring you from afar and uh, this kind of harkens back to the Aries reading that I did where Aries uh, they have a lot of admirers and a lot of suitors but the suitors are kind of looking at Aries like they want to have a screaming good time with Aries but I feel like your admirers are are thinking like you're a really good person you're a really good man or you're a really good woman and they wish they could find a really good man or a really good woman like you they see the gentle way in which you deal with people. They see the friendly way and the, the ease in which you have conversations with others. They see the ease in which you're able to smile and make people feel at ease. And I feel that it's really comforting for, it's, it's just like, you know, they're, they're naturally very drawn to you. And um, what's really interesting is with Aries, and, and the men, reason I mentioned Aries, excuse me for those who are not familiar, Aries is your opposite sign, it's your shadow sign, okay? So the energy playing out for Aries in their love sector is also very similar to you. But with Aries, they because they're a fire sign, they attract very fiery types of personality as well, where the their, their admirers declare, you know, verbally declare their love to them. And I feel like whereas for you guys, as an air sign, all of these thoughts and feelings are, are felt by your admirers, but it's kept in the mind, it's kept in the mental space. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And um, I just feel like if you find yourself in a situation where somebody keeps crossing paths with you, I don't think it's it's an accident. I think that they're purposely, purposely, e either purposely or subconsciously very drawn to you and they want to be in your presence and they want to be around you. So it's not just, you know, um, serendipity or like, oh, coincidence, you're here. You know, I saw you the other day over there and now you're here, what are, what are the odds? They're not stalking you or creepily invading your space. I don't feel that. I don't I don't feel any creepiness or any stalkerish vibe. I feel like subconsciously they're very drawn to your warmth. And funnily enough, um, I did the reading for Aquarius and Gemini and I in in one of those readings, your fellow air signs, um, 
I mentioned that somebody was very drawn to your warmth. So for whatever reason, you know, air signs are not typically like uh, consider warm. No offense, we're not consider warm. We're consider friendly and easy and, and you know easy to talk to, but not super warm the way that a water sign would be. But for some reason, I mentioned, I think it was the Aquarius reading, that people find them very warm. So there's something happening in the, the month of December. It's bringing out your caring, nurturing, warm side, and it's making it very visible. But I digress. Either way, I'm going back to this um, image, and there's another message that came through, so let me relay that before I forget. This man is a habitual like patron of this diner, okay? So he might have started going there before the waitress or the hostess works there. Or he might have started going. So I, I don't know the ins and outs of that. But I just feel like he props himself right by the counter under the guise of, you know, um, it being convenient because he's there by himself. But because he enjoys chatting to chatting with and looking at this woman. Um, and so I feel like, you know, it's, it's not a coincidence. If you keep seeing somebody um, mulling around or in your vicinity or like you constantly run into them, I feel that they're energetically thinking about you and drawn to you and admiring you. Um, and I also feel like they're definitely interested, but the way in which they show their affection, uh, they might be a little bit rough on uh, rough around the edges. They might not feel like they're good enough for you, or they might not feel like they're your type. Okay, they might not feel like you're. They might not feel like the feelings are are mutual from your end, and so they never say anything. Okay, so th that's just um, what I saw first. So. For those who are single, you know, give, give people a chance because I'm seeing here there might be a really good man or a very good woman in your environment that would be a, a, a very suitable relationship partner for you. Not only that, for those of you who are looking for like a serious partner, somebody you want to spend your, the rest of your life with, I feel like there's somebody here that wants to go the distance, you know? They'd rather be single than be in the wrong relationship, right? So it's not someone who's desperate for a relationship. They know themselves. They know what works for them. So they'd rather be with you rather than, you know, just date around and be in bad relationships. So I feel in a way this person might not, might have entered your radar but might have uh, not caught your attention because they might not have felt like, you know, that they're your type. And you might have like a um, working relationship with them where you just never thought it was possible that there might have been romantic feelings or romantic thoughts or, you know, inclination from their end to want to date you. So I, I feel like there are, it's like, um, missed I, I don't want to say a misconnection because you know the person's always there but I feel like you know the the feelings are never thought uh, are never talked about okay so there's a really good man or really good woman in your midst and so you know keep your eyes out if you're single okay so having said that let's talk about these four characters um first of all for those who of you, of you who um, okay, so let let me let me try to remember that that image that I saw here. Um, okay, there's a, a message here. Um, something is it, it, it's like he said, and the wor the words that he said really resonated. Like every year around this time, it, it bothers me. Okay. So he's talking about like a physical uh, discomfort, but I feel like for many of you, it's not just a physical discomfort. It's something that, that gets triggered every now and then, every holiday season, every time of the year, or even, you know, every, every change in weather, okay? So we're in the month of December. It is the winter time in the Northern Hemisphere. 
So I feel like something is being triggered either seasonally, thematically. Um, maybe it's the holiday season, and we're being triggered by our parents. But I feel like it's it's a, a situation where it's it's uncomfortable physically, and then it becomes uncomfortable kind of emotionally. Okay, um, and so I do feel like there there might be a lot of squabbling between you and a significant other over something that gets triggered every year around this time. For some of you, this could have to do with, you know, um, the blending of the family, co-parenting. Um, do we send the kids to this place or do we send the kids to the other place? Um, if you're in like blended family, that also becomes a source of contention. Do I take my kids or do my ex get to keep the kids for these major holidays? Do I spend, you know, time with my new wife, my new husband and their kids? Or do I spend my holidays with uh, my ex and my, my child with the ex? So it, it's like complicated, okay? Things are complicated. And so I feel like something is recurring. And then I also feel for many of you, um, the message that I'm getting here is um, just because there is conflict amongst people, it doesn't mean that the love is not there. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you because that's what shows to came out uh, to come out. So that that's what like just kind of oozed out. So I feel like it's kind of telling you. If you're dealing with somebody and every single time you talk about this one topic, it triggers conflict, it triggers like disagreement, it triggers lack of um, consensus, it, it, it just triggers like really raw emotions within you and then within that other person. And just because it does that, it, it doesn't mean that there is, you know, zero compatibility. It's just you feel really strongly about this topic. They feel really strongly about this topic. This might just be a hot trigger topic for you and this person. It doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you guys are doomed. Okay? It doesn't indicate to me that this is a sign. This is not the person for you to be with. That That's not what it's saying. It's saying that even the best relationships, you know, go through periods of abundance and drought even the best healthiest relationship um, involves quarrels involve disagreement and actually a dose of disagreement strengthen a relationship okay so once again I'm gonna give that analogy with the tree I don't describe it very well but I'm just gonna try so when you have a tree okay the, the tree has to deal with inclement weather it has to grow in a place where there's a lot of wind, where there's a lot of rain, where there's a lot of just, you know, it has to be exposed to the elements for the trunks to become stronger, for the tree to learn to grow straight. And so adversity is the stuff of light, okay? It fortifies us, it makes us stronger. So arguments within the relationship serve the same purpose in that it strengthens the relationship it allows you to stand your ground and it allows the other person to stand theirs. It, it allows the two of you to learn to compromise, to learn to work around each other. It strengthens the relationship. So every relationship requires a healthy dose of arguments, uh, disagreements. Okay? And the reason why I say this is we have the Five of Swords, which is bickering. So you see this card, there are three chickens. And it's clucking, you know how when the chickens just cluck, it's very irritating, it's very annoying. And at the end of the day, it's just clucks, just noise. No one is really hearing one another. But it's joined up here with the Two of Cups. And this is a reminder for us this holiday season when we're dealing with like a lot of people, when we're dealing with coworkers, office parties, uh, family gatherings, 
meeting everybody from you know um, friends and relatives and who they're dating keeping everybody's uncles names and aunts names straight we're in this environment where we're not gonna get along and I keep hearing this as well the 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 topics of politics and religion will come up and you know it's such a hot trigger topic nowadays so we're not always gonna get along but we don't have to get along with this two of cups here it's a gentle reminder for us that you know we're not human unless we have strong opinions about things right unless we can think for ourselves and unless we know what we believe in and what we don't believe in what is total rubbish and so it's really telling you to pick your battles because the five of swords is mindless bickering whereas the two of cups is about camaraderie it's about calmness and tranquility and compatibility so pick your battles but at the same time a healthy dose of conflict if we don't take it personally is very good for fostering solid strong relationships and um, you know Libras you guys are the gentlest signs of the um, zodiac I feel like you guys and cancers are very gentle are very like kind loving people you're also very conflict avoidant you will stand up for the things that you believe in but you don't want to argue with somebody especially if they're not very knowledgeable you, you don't want to waste your time and then you also don't like it when other people argue okay it, it, it ruins your vibe it, it ruins the ambiance and it makes you uncomfortable and so I would say you know uh, being around this environment might not be all that bad because I feel that some things need to be addressed some things need to be kind of brought to the surface and talked about so that we we can fortify our relationships okay it's sort of like with family members we it's a love-hate relationship right we get like you can't live with them can't live without them there's a lot of conflict there's a lot of bickering they know how to push your buttons but at the same time there's you know unconditionally like there's a lot of love so it's one of those situations where take the good with the bad you know that's that's life pretty much okay so there's this person here where you know you can't get along but it doesn't diminish the love okay and then I have another person here that is very loving very attractive very beautiful and um, it's showing up here as the Empress this is somebody with children this is somebody you might have children with and we have the ace of Pentacles and the ace of Pentacles is um, possibly like the beginning of something so for some of you you might be contemplating you know going after somebody that you're really interested in you might not have children they might have children and so you're kind of like you know um, slowing your your buying your time or pondering and you know like if this is a good thing to get involved in give me just one second sorry about that so I was talking about this person right here and uh, I feel like you know they have a really good heart so it's showing up as the Empress this is the caretaker the nurturer the giver this is someone who's also very attractive they're beautiful uh, or handsome they uh, take good care of themselves not in a vain you know way but um, they're they're very presentable okay and I also feel like they're very good with animals they're very good with children when people are good to animals and are good to children they just they're just a good person okay so I feel like you and this person might be on the verge of either tying the knot taking a relationship like you know somebody asking somebody approaching someone to ask um, they could be approaching you you could be approaching them um, for like hey do you want to go out for dinner I'm interested in you so like there's some type of an offer coming through with this person here and then I also feel like you know you might be single without children they might have children you might have children they might be single without kids uh, there is definitely an age difference okay so I'm seeing like this could be you know that that hostess at the diner you might be a little bit older and um, you're interested in, in in her 
or him, or the other person, one person is older than the other. So there's an age difference here that I'm sensing. And I feel like it is a very good match. And I feel that, you know, um, if you're the one without, if you're the one without the children, their children are very well behaved and they will embrace you like family. They will treat you like family. They will, you know, invite you into the fold. Okay, so I feel like th there is a potential here for a really good relationship. I also feel as well, these two characters can be a mesh or can be the same person. But just because there are occasional conflicts and just because you can't get over this one thing, it doesn't diminish the love in this situation in any way, all right? Um, I feel like some of you are thinking about, you know, traveling, spending like a large amount of money traveling as a unit, traveling as a family. So you're possibly saving up, like measuring out your, your coins, me measuring out your pentacles, um, saving up so that it's like you, you've been planning this and you want to do like an extravagant getaway. And I also feel like... You're, you might be doing this with your whole family, with siblings, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandparents even. Like it's an extravagant type of a, a trip, a get together, a getaway. And I feel that it's gonna be picture perfect, okay? I have here the 10 of pentacles, generational wealth. It's resting on top of the justice card. So I feel like, you know, generosity, everything will be, be balanced out if there has been swaddling. And, you know, at the end of the night, when everyone's a little bit tipsy from the food and the wine and the drinks, and everyone takes that um, family photo, it's going to come out great. So, I see a lot of togetherness, a lot of, um, you know, camaraderie, and just an, a tremendous amount of love here coming through from, from this spread. That indicates to me, you know, no matter what, no matter what, it's going to be fine. And so, what I also feel as well, um, when I saw that man kind of um, talking about, you know, every time around this, this, every year around this time, it bothers me. I'm getting an image of snow, okay, like the cold, the snow. Um, it could even be the month of December. Something happened last year around the month of December where somebody exited the picture. I, I feel like somebody exited the picture. And then this month in December, I feel like they might have also exited the picture and you're missing this person. Um, for some of you, this could be a fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo. We have the King of Pentacles. I'm sorry, the ping, King of Wands. So this is the fire sign. Sagittarius, Aries or Leo and the Five of Pentacles. Leaving the picture um, left out in the cold, there might not have been a lot of communication between you and this person. You're looking at them, wondering, thinking and wondering what they're up to. They're thinking and wondering about you, what you're up to. For many of you, this is like um, a relationship that never got off the ground. Uh, misconnections. I feel like the other person had to do something to get their career or their work in order. I also feel like you had things in your life that was preventing you from being in a relationship with this person. Okay, and I, I do sense for many of you, you might be in another relationship and you admire this person. I feel like the, the feelings are very mutual. You like them, they like you. But for whatever reason, they were going off to pursue their career. You might have been in another relationship and you couldn't be with them. So the feelings are felt, but I feel like out of the sense of responsibility and more morality and ethics, nobody did anything because 
because they didn't want you to stray. You also didn't want to stray. And so there there was like a missed opportunity here. And I feel like, you know, there there's a, a thing here about timing and seasons and December. So whatever happened, you know, last December, it's bringing back the same sense of abandonment, the same sense of nostalgia, the same sense of lack, and the same sense of like lack in communication, you know, lacking in communication, um, not wanting to be on the outs with this person anymore, being a little bit as well, um, I want to say like, it's stirring up a, a pain, okay? It's stirring up like um, a discomfort 